Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say today. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. Kind of like uh, my process before the same. I'm going through the same process again. <clears throat> right now, I'm just um, walking out my mask. Some people use all the fancy masking tools and whatnot, and I, I don't bother with that. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it works better. I guess after all the years of using Photoshop, I couldn't be bothered with getting that technical. I just, I just like drawing and painting and getting straight to it. I don't want to have to know any more tools that are, are really necessary. seen some guys though that can do things with Photoshop you know with all their hotkeys I mean I use a lot of hotkeys but I've seen some crazy stuff where guys are just flying through just tapping a lot of buttons and they're way deeper into it than I am When you do a fill, um, sometimes get this little line, and you can hit it again and fill it again. But something that happens is then it adds more to the edge on the outside, and it's all real jagged. And I, you know, I'd just rather hand do that and clean it up by hand than mess with it. All right, now I'll depict my flat grays that I want.
All right, I've pretty much got the <clears throat> the levels of gray that I want. So um, let's see. Let me merge that one down, and I take layer eight there with all the gray, and I make a copy, drag it down in the post note, make a copy, image, adjust, levels, and I take that and drop it way dark. All right, now to the first lighting pass, and with my eraser, get my airbrush eraser, and I drop the opacity down to like three percent <clears throat> and I like to uh, zoom way out so I could just focus on the light not like little detail and I'm gonna pinpoint the light right about here on his head Now that I've established basically the the lighting that I want, I can go in and now start adding a little detail in the lighting. I don't know why, but this sort of reminds me of a <clears throat> Disney movie when I was a kid called Condor Man. I don't know if anybody remembers it, but I think it would be kind of fun to remake uh, Condor Man. Maybe get Jim Carrey to play it. I always loved the car and the boat that he had in the movie. Yeah, it was about a a comic book artist, comic strip artist that took on his character, his character's costume and superhero title, and became a real superhero. But of course, you know, back then, cartoonists made loads of money and could do such a thing. 
which you know probably back in the 60s 70s cartoonists were making a mint but you know that's kind of all changed now like newspaper comic strip guys aren't making that much money anymore newspapers are dying A lot of kids nowadays don't even know what the funny papers are. brush and get a hard edge and go get my secondary lighting the airbrush eraser. That tapping noise is my pin on my Cintiq.
decent. Alright, now to start blending, go to my blending phase. I said before, that's probably the most tedious part of the entire process. I want to do that Windows key. I wish it was disabled while you're in Photoshop. Like they would program that in.
I always seem to hit it when I'm trying to zoom in and out or use the color picker or Right now, I'm just worried about blending out any hard lines in some spaces. Some I'll keep. Like I've said before, my way isn't always the right way. It's not the right way for everybody. You know, there are different different ways of tackling a lot of the same things. This just happens to be my way, and it works for me. guys get a chance um, go check out <clears throat> um, YouTube videos for a guy by the name of Roger Barcelona and he has a school called the Gemini School of Art there in Cedar Park Texas and He's Spaniard and has many, many years experience painting. And there's a video, a speed painting video that he put up recently of him painting Clint Eastwood that will just blow your mind. I mean, it is incredible watching him paint. And I was fortunate enough to spend a couple years sharing an office with him uh, for a while in a video game studio I worked at. He is a master, a master painter. One of the one of the best you'll ever see, one of one of the greatest living painters right now, and he just does not get enough recognition or notoriety. You need to check him out, and if you get an op, if you're somebody looking to go to an art school, I recommend his school. <clears throat> you should see what he does. 
is new first year students. The amount of work they put or the kind of work they put out in their first year is unbelievable. It turns, it turns really good childlike stick figure drawing kind of artists into masters for the pencil. But, you know, part of that too is how badly do you uh, want to learn to draw and learn what he has to share and apply it. That's another thing, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of kids go to art school and they think, well, I'm just going to go and get by and all that degree is automatically going to, going to be getting me work and fame and all this other stuff. And, you know, hey, I'm just going to dress up like an artist and put on the airs of being an artist. To, to look impressive to everybody, but I still didn't learn a darn thing. But I look cool. Yeah, there, that's a that happens a, with a lot of kids. So they think they can get into art school and they don't have to put in any effort. And and you need to put in as much effort to learning and drawing when you're not in class why so many art students drop out and fail That's why so many artists or people that try to make a living at art fail because they don't put in the effort and the time Don't try hard enough. It's not easy. If it were, everybody would be doing it. Athletes <clears throat> the best athletes train and practice every day. <clears throat> There's no reason that you shouldn't be drawing or practicing every day to some capacity. It doesn't matter if it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, several hours. As long as you try to set that time aside and discipline yourself. <clears throat> There's no quick uh, way to get to where you need them uh, to be artistically. I mean, I've, there are kids that are. 20 years old that just kick total ass and they're just amazing and they pick it up really fast. I mean, they just have a knack for it. They learn really quick. But because you're not learning really quick, don't let that pressure you. It's going to take you longer. Most people, it takes longer to get good at something. Don't let it. Don't let that blind you and make you feel bad. It's just how it, how it works sometimes. There are just some people that are that are quick, quick learners.
So yeah, I'm in my 40s now, and it's taken me this long to get to this point that you're watching me right now. And I still feel like I'm learning. And I don't feel like I'm as good as I want to be or could be. <clears throat> that I still have a, a lot to learn. But I've also noticed too that you know, I'm more enthusiastic as I've gotten older to try and learn uh, newer things and push myself and know what I need to do to push myself more now than I used to and that's also uh, no I don't know um, I've also feel like I have a better understanding of my tools I'm at a point now where Puzzles are are my subjects now, and not so much my tools, because I have a better understanding of my tools. In pain and art is a puzzle all the time. It's never it's never dull unless you you make it and you keep painting the same thing over and over again, or drawing the same thing over again. You should always try to do something that you haven't done before or at least do it better the next time. You will always get better at something and you shouldn't be afraid to try something you're not used to doing. It's a, it is a mental hurdle to get over and if you're not used to drawing buildings and vehicles and perspective that well you know it's gonna it's gonna hurt your brain it's gonna rack your brain and be really really tough but once you do it enough times and you've done it many times it's pretty easy you have a better understanding of how to approach it when you do it next time. So try to push yourself through those mental mental hang-ups. No matter how how difficult it, and how much effort it seems like it'll be. going to take a little bit more away from that gray layer. I realize I need to kind of lighten some stuff up a little bit. That worked. All right, go back to what I was doing.
make sure I save my my line art. I'll make a copy. Drag it down here. Hide it. And Mask. I'm doing is to like you saw in the other video is um, adding black on a layer that's dropped to a fill of like 40% or opacity 40% and drawing over it and then just gently um, softening some of the edges Soften the shadow.
All right, now for the white layer.
is starting to look pretty cool. Okay. All right, now I need to find the shield logo. Oh, this 
me. In a world of your imagination. All right. Oops, spelt shield wrong. E L D. Shield logo. <clears throat> now, only one of these is really the correct logo. The correct shield logo, other than the classic. The correct shield logo, the head is even with the top of the wings. So you know when somebody did it wrong is when the head is above the wings. So, which one do I want? You know what? I'm going to grab this one. I think I got it. These layers, and I can want that's uh, brightness on the contrast. Let's see how that looks. Mm, I like the way I had it originally. All right. Now what? Oh yeah, color. Earlier, I'd snagged uh, this picture, this dude, and I kind of like that color there. Hide it. Then I'm going to go in and on overlay, paint it over. 
don't know what color I'm going to color uh, a hawk. I wonder if I'll do something similar or different color. Maybe I should get uh, the actors. Whoa. All right, this brush won't. Wow. I've never seen that. Brush just grew massive, and my dogs won't hush. guess it got stuck. I've never seen it get stuck like that before. I guess you have to just give it a moment. Oh, now it won't paint. Oh! Of course. down to desaturate it. All right, let's see what the color of his hair is. Let's pick that as the bird's hair color. This time, instead of just being a solid color, I'm going to airbrush in uh, a little bit other color around the darker parts and the lighter parts.
Bye. Thought I was on the airbrush. Or my paintbrush. Derp, derp, derp. Somebody got confused by this step yesterday. I'm just pointing out I can add noise to any size image I want. I'm just scaling this one down for the web and then hitting it with noise. So nothing confusing there. There, I like. I like adding a little noise that gives it a little character and a photographic look. Alrighty. That's that. Thank you for watching another video and listening to me ramble on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera.